So much I sex. I wear my, my tight jeans, though. It's okay. I like wearing my slutty squatting shorts. Okay. So, um, I'm going to okay. start so, with very basic bench press down. technique. Um, um, starts with how you some of this might be super begin beginner level, um, so just kind of bear with me as we go through. Um, anybody here have like shoulder pain? You have like a shoulder issue? <laughs> so typically, I'm less than two weeks cleared from back surgery. <laughs> Didn't you have a shoulder issue before though? Uh, I got, I got uh, some tendonitis and it kind of is. Okay, but so I remember there wasn't there a time when you were benching. Yeah, that's right. It was shaky. Yeah, it's something. I think it's something in my scapula. Yeah. You got it figured out? No. It's huge knots. Fuck it. It's all checked. Fuck it. Um. So we'll talk a little bit about grip. For raw benchers, we're typically the strongest, more narrow, right? You'll see the gear lifters, the guys that wear bench press shirts, they'll go out as wide as they possibly can because the spring off the bottom of the on a, off your chest is where the shirt helps the most, right? So you don't need as much power there. You need more power at your lockout and you're trying to lessen the range of motion. Rod benchers come in a little bit tighter and the way, the best way I like to describe to somebody is if you were to come at me and I, I'm gonna push you, right? I'm not gonna push you like this. I'm gonna push you this way because this is where we're really strong. Same thing with pushing the bar. In a little bit more narrow, is what's gonna make you the more strong. But the, now the problem with that is somebody like Tiny, so he's got a shoulder issue. The more narrow that you're in, the further your shoulder has to cock back for it to get to your chest, right? And so that's where you need to start off going as narrow as possible, but then when you feel pain or you feel like you don't have that pop off your chest, just start moving it out slowly. <laughs> but not going to the extreme where you're out as far as possible because you won't get any speed off your chest. Bringing the bar down, okay, this is kind of the tricky thing. You're trying to build momentum. Now the reason people miss uh, a lockout on the bench press is there's not enough speed off the chest. To create more speed off the chest, you need to have momentum. So ways of getting momentum is lifting your head up, right? So you start bringing the bar down, you lift your head up, it gets to your chest. Right when you go to press, you're driving off your heels, not your toes. You have your feet planted, driving off your heels, slam your head back, and then you're trying to create distance between you and the bar. So that's tip number one. The next thing is, unracking the bar, we'll take it like this. People have this idea of saying, bend the bar. They don't understand really what that means. What they're trying to tell you to do by bending the bar is turn your elbows in. But really what people do is they just squeeze the bar harder instead of turning their elbows in. That's where people fail. So bending the bar, what you want to do, turn your elbows in. So when you're bringing the bar down, your elbows are nice and tucked in. You get the press command or you decide to press, you come up, you activate your lats because now you're, I mean, you can feel your, your lats should be nice and tight at this point. You'll come up and as the bar slows down, you rotate your elbows out. Now if the bar still isn't moving, that's when you start to drip the bar up over your face. Because ultimately right here, I could take a four or five board, put it on any of you guys, and I'd be very confident you would hit probably 200% of your max. Up here is where we're the strongest. So let it drift over your head, get it here, and then finish the lockout. What we want to practice doing is driving that air down into your stomach. It's kind of a lot to remember. Grab the bar, we're gonna bend it by turning our elbows in. We're lifting our head up as it comes down. Press, start to fire up, head back. Rotate the elbows out. The bar still stops. Maybe we're just short of locking out. Start drifting it up over your head. And then right here's where you're gonna be the strongest. Typically you'll see people bench this way, right? Because it's kind of their old habits. It's probably what they learned in high school. It's the way that their gym coach taught them how to do it. Problem is, is you're opening yourself up to a lot of liability in your shoulder. Plus you're not all that strong down at the bottom like this. Now, if you're typically, if you're used to benching this way, or if you're used to benching up on your toes, like if you tuck your feet behind you and bench off your toes, 
If you so switch these things out, you you're not going to see a difference right away, right? This is going to take some time, especially if you've been doing it for a couple of years, you know, six months to a few years, it's going to be very difficult at first. Your lips are probably going to go down. So keep that in mind. It, technique is going to take you a lot further and save your shoulders. A lot more success down the road versus, you know, having a bodybuilding style type bench press, ruin your shoulders and then not hit whatever your potential is. That's where all the bad things happen. So, so I don't want to bench with any weight today. All I want to do is just kind of have it going and lifting your head up. Pushing your elbows in, kind of looking at everybody's setup. Learn how to, when you set up, lay down on the bench and then try to get your shoulder blades to touch. Lift out, grab the bar, you should be super tight. You should get like kind of a cramp in your traps. Get the bar, we'll turn our elbows in, bring the bar down, lift our head up, and then come out this way. All right?